Hi, I'm Gwilym Harris-Evans. I'm a yacht surveyor working in Portugal and South Atlantic Spain. I'm about to talk you through the underwater survey of a hard chine steel yacht, including an ultrasound survey. OK, I'm Gwilym Harris-Evans and this morning we're going to do an ultrasound survey of the underwater sections of this typical hard chine Dutch built steel boat. She's a heavy duty motor sailor heavy displacement, very attractive boat, um, but she's 20, 25, 30 years old now, so it's time to check, check the thickness of the steel in the underwater sections. The equipment we'll be using is, is a Cygnus ultrasound meter. This is a multi-echo type meter, and this means that I can do the ultrasound readings of the hull through, through the paint system and through filler, within reason, so long as the filler isn't too thick, this will give me only a, a reading of the thickness of the steel itself. With old single echo meters, I would need to grind the entire paint system off at every point I'm taking reading. This is obviously a problem if you've just paid for an expensive epoxy paint system. Before we take some readings, let's, let's just have a look at the meter. When I turn it on, It'll go through its little referencing sequence and this little flashing light tells me that it's now ready, ready to take readings and we'll, we'll show you one or two of those readings once we get going. What I'm using here is a, is a couplant gel which, which excludes air between, between the uh, sensor here and, and the material of the hull itself. So what I'll do is put the couplant on three or four, three or four places, and then we'll see what the meter tells us. Let's take the first one. Okay, the meter is showing us 4.9 millimeters. This is five millimeter steel plate. This this whole vessel, the top sides. All the underwater plating is in 5mm plate, except for the bottom of the keel and the rudder. When steel comes from the rolling mill in the first place, it'll be anywhere between about 4.8 and 5.2mm. It's, it's not very exact. So, within those tolerances, we can more or less say that there's been no corrosion of the steel itself, no deterioration. In Europe, generally, we say you can lose 20% of your plating thickness to cor corrosion before that begins to affect the structural in in integrity of the vessel. So, by and large, I'll disregard readings which, which are above around 4 millimetres. If I see some readings which are 4.3, 4.4, 4.5, then it tells me something is going on on the other side of the plating. And it may be it's the inside of a water tank and there's some corrosion. It may be just on top of a frame, which is a water trap, or it may be simple deterioration of the interior paint system and some cor corrosion, which can be locally treated. OK, let's try one or two more. 4.9, 4.9, 5, 4.9. So we can see that these are right in the frame in terms of the steel being in the condition it was when, when the vessel was built. There are some readings we took earlier over here. 4.5, 4.3. Now these chalk marks indicate readings at 500 millimeter centers. This is the industry standard. So these are the minimum readings that we'll take. In reality, we take many more readings. And for example, I'll take lots of readings near the base of the hull near the base of the keel because that's an area where bilge water collects and the steel may be thin. In this area where the readings are a bit low earlier I took lots of readings around that area to see whether that was very local to the, this piece of plating and it was and later I'll be looking inside the hull to see whether there are any reasons I can find for that. All the same checks apply to a steel boat as applied to a fiberglass boat, they will have rudders, propellers, propeller shafts and so on. So we'll be checking 
this rudder. This rudder is steel, so I can use my ultrasound meter. And we find that this rudder is made of 4 millimeters of length. And we're having readings at the bottom where, if any water has collected, it might be thinner. We're still finding 3.9 and 4. So we can reasonably assume that this rudder is in good order. We've tried its bearings. We've looked at it internally to see if, if the rudder stock is in good condition, if the quadrant that's attached to the rudder stock is in good condition, and whether the wires that are operating the steering show any signs of stranding or lack of greasing and so on. This vessel has been well maintained and shows none of those problems. We're looking, as we did in the fiberglass boat, for de-zinking of this three-bladed three prop. There are no problems. We see, we see the nice bronze sheen, no pink sheen, indicating that the alloy is losing its zinc, becoming weaker, and then there's always the danger of the propeller shedding one blade, in which case it would be severely imbalanced and it would be virtually impossible to use the engine. We're checking too that what sort of state the anodes are in. Again, we would do this on a fiberglass vessel, or indeed any construction. When an anode is more than 50% depleted, it doesn't have the surface area to work effectively. So you may think there's quite a lot left of an anode, but it's not necessarily got enough life left in it. So when the boat's on the hard standing before we launch her, it would be a good idea to replace them. This one is OK. Probably at the next haul out we'd be calling for its replacement. This one is okay too, and there are others you can see on the hull of this vessel. In addition to the ultrasound and the horribly expensive meter that we need to take the ultrasound reading, we have the old-fashioned hammer, which can tell us quite a lot. In this case, it's helped us to identify a very small area at, at the back and the base of the keel here. And you can see that with this chipping hammer, we've penetrated the plating. Now, what we can then do is sound around the area, but also take lots and lots of ultrasound readings to see how far that problem extends. In point of fact, it doesn't extend very far. The base plate under the keel here is 10 millimeter plate and is very solid still. And this area is the area that needs attention. And the owner in intends to cut out that piece of plating and replace it and have it professionally welded. In which case it's a repair which is as good as new. One of the virtues of steel. The steel is cheap and the welding is quick and easy. That's the only piece of perforated plate on this vessel. Now we'll move on to skin fittings. As with a fiberglass vessel, this one has bronze or DZR, that's designification resistant brass skin fittings. Sometimes you'll come across black plastic skin fittings and these are a glass filled polymer. Nothing wrong with those but these happen to be bronze or DZR. I scraped these earlier looking for the distinctive pink sheen of designification. You can see here a nice bronze colour, no, no pink effect and what the pink effect would be telling me is that the zinc is leaching out of the alloy and leaving copper with its distinctive coppery colour. All of these skin fittings and the ones on the other side of the vessel are fine. We looked in the same way at the pr propeller to check for the same process. It's important to emphasise don't be afraid of finding a little bit of thin plating or a problem like the one we identified in the keel on an older steel vessel. Steel is easy and relatively cheap to re repair in most cases. And it's a long lasting and, and very strong material. Should you need a survey on a steel vessel in Atlantic, Spain and Portugal, I'd be happy to oblige. For anywhere else in Europe, I belong to an organisation called British Marine Surveyors Europe. And we have surveyors everywhere who are professionally qualified and insured and will do a proper job on your vessel. So for pre-purchase, for insurance, for valuations, for damage surveys, 
go to the BMSE website and find the surveyor nearest to you. Thanks for watching this video.